G'day, welcome to this live session. I'm Stephen Travis. Um, yeah, glad you can join us. This is uh, uh, not my usual time slot for for doing a live session. Normally, it's Sunday morning my time, or occasion uh, Sunday night my time, or occasionally Monday morning. But um, I didn't get my vid my drawing finished today, so some things came up, and so the video wasn't done. And I thought, oh look, I'll do an extra, I'll do an extra live session because I've got I've got something that I was going to do a, a, a session about, uh, do a video about, but I think it, it will make a, a good uh, a good live session discussion. Uh, g'day, uh, Jessica and Alex and uh, anyone else who's who's here. Welcome. Welcome. So um, what did my thumbnail say? Um, a, a change of focus to revolutionize your drawing. And I actually think that's true for what I'm going to talk about it. It... Um, Hope it doesn't sound too clickbaity, um, but I actually think it's true. It's certainly been true for me, and most of what I talk about and most of the videos I do are about things I've learned on my drawing journey that I feel have really improved my art and my development. Um, I'm still very much, I think, on an improvement journey, um, as as I suspect we all are. Hey there, uh, Alahan, welcome. So, um, so where does our where does our drawing come from? When when we when we have a drawing at the end and we look at it, like where has this come from? What's the process that this has appeared on the paper, whatever it is, whatever we we happen to draw? Um, and it's it's easy to think of it as well. It's come from the materials that I've used. It's come from the pens and the, the, the pencils, it's come from a reference photo. If I had one, it might have come from my imagination. It might have come from something in front of me. It's it's come from watercolours or or whatever, whatever materials I've used and I've, I've put together. Um, my question is before, hi, Amy, before we get to that stage, though, where where has it come? Carol, good that you could join us again. Where, where has it come from? Because... This, this is probably the end result of a journey that started when I first picked up something and made and 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 uh, maybe a crayon, maybe it was a pencil, maybe it was in school, maybe it was at home. Um, this is not just the result of of getting a reference and sitting down and saying I'm I'm going to draw it. So. Um, but that's that's often our focus. Our, our focus. Um, is very much when we go to draw, or it can be, <clears throat> on putting lines on paper. And when we think of drawing, when I say what's involved in drawing, probably the first thing everyone thinks of is putting lines on paper is, is what's involved in drawing. And there are different ways we can do that, but, but that's, that's the fundamental, fundamental thing. And I certainly would have said that as well. And, and, um, But in fact, there are parts before that, very important parts before that, and these parts are sort of the context for, for the main thing I want to say. Um, they're not the actual main thing. But the parts before that uh, are that we need to be thinking and we need to be observing before we can put the lines on the paper. Um, and and I often talk about the creative process, and, and that's, that's where everything is birthed from. Even if we're copying a photo, we still have to translate that photo into our drawing. It's not automatic. Um, <laughs> thanks, Sarah. Said, yeah, uh, please like the like the video if uh, if you do like it. Um, and then we also have to then you know as part of that creative process, we need to be observing carefully. I think there is often um, when I look at drawings today. I see what I think it has been a great rush to put in lines on the paper, to, to grab in the pen and to, if you like, start in our minds, start the drawing. When in fact the drawing starts when I first start to work out what lines I want to make on my paper. And and I and and I was thinking, why why don't we have this focus in drawing on on thinking and observing? Why do we see it 
quite narrowly as the end result, really. And I think it's partly because of how we started drawing. I think when we were kids, um, drawing was very much about drawing lines on paper. And so that's just the way we were we were made to think. And there probably wasn't much emphasis or teaching on observing or thinking um, because almost anything we did was acceptable. So possibly we we started that way. Um, I think it's partly because we've we've lost the art of learning. Um, lost the art of learning. Um, I do sound a bit old man when I say that, don't I? But but I think once upon a time we were more aware of process and of development of process, and that that the actual the actual drawing that appears at the end is is part of a process. Um, and I think I think we've um, again I'll sound very old man at this, but I think I think we're as a society generation by generation in some ways we lose a sense of the effort that's involved to do well in something. And I, I noticed this when I was a teenager, that I felt we were doing less work than the people before us. I was in Australia. I was the very last year where when you finished your schooling, in your last year of schooling, you did your final exams and it was a 100% exam, a three-hour or a six-hour exam exam. And for each subject you were doing, your whole schooling was measured on the mark you got from that exam. And it was pretty stressful, as you can imagine. But one of the things we used to do was look at papers from previous years. And I can remember thinking, I'm so glad I wasn't having to answer the questions from two or three years ago. And it wasn't that I didn't know the work, but it was because they seemed to demand so much more of me. And then as I stepped, because I then finished school and trained at uni and became a teacher for a few years, um, a high school teacher, I stayed in touch with the school system. And I felt that every year after that, less and less rigour was required of students. Now, they were doing lots of things that we weren't doing, but it just seemed that there was in some way less demanded um, of them. And I think to 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 think and to um, to observe hard is part of the rigor of drawing. And I think that the final reason we perhaps don't see this is is just impatience. We're keen to get to the bit that in our mind matters, which is putting the pen on the paper. And so and so we rush to do that, and we haven't yet understood or worked out what we're wanting to put on the paper or what we need to put on the paper and we haven't observed our reference carefully enough to see where we need to put it and just to plan it properly. And that's why we end up with so many things that look misshapen because we haven't seen yet what we've needed to see. We haven't slowed down enough. We haven't realised the, the, the amount of kind of steadiness and work and effort it is in our eyes and our head before we put a mark anywhere. So um, and so we finish up with a drawing that's that's far more superficial than what we needed to draw, wanted to draw, and I think could have drawn if if we'd been prepared to um, increase our awareness and our effort and our, our commitment to the process and and to actually put more time into these these, earlier parts, the thinking and the and the observing before before we let the pencil or the pen or whatever hit the paper or whatever we're drawing on. Um, yeah, and, and and we're not necessarily talking about more time. Sometimes it's it's just more effort. Um, but still um, so that's not that's not my point. That's not what's going to revolutionize things. But it is, but it is important, and it is sort of the context. And, I, and I'll say now what it is that I think is going to uh, potentially revolutionise your drawing, because I feel like it's revolutionised my drawing, and it's really only been happening um, in less than the last twelve months. And it's to do with one word. And I don't know whether you've noticed me in my videos make this shift and make this shift in the words I use when I draw. 
Um, but the word is I've shifted in my thinking and therefore in my speaking from talking about lines as much as I did and I talk a lot more about marks. And I do this because I think more about marks. I can remember when, when I first... Um, when I first heard people talk about mark making in, in, in drawing and in art, thinking, oh, goodness, how pretentious, you know, it sounded so pompous and kind of, you know, erudite. I don't know, like people trying to impress people. And and I just I just thought it was uh, crazy. Um, but uh, <laughs> is, is that a go at me, George Lucas? <laughs> well, I enjoyed Star Wars, so that's fine. Um, um I was trying to grab that thought. Um, yeah, but but we very heavily think of lines, and so we start to draw lines. And I was thinking, well, why is this? And I think this does go back to our childhood, where as children, when we draw, we we do draw outline. No, this is just that. Well, it's where where it's not the end of the stream. It's uh, eleven minutes into the stream. Um, this is uh, not my usual sort of time. Um, certainly not my usual day, um, that when we're kids, we, we draw in a cartoony way. And we're really capturing, in most cases, unless we're a prodigy, we're catching, catching something of a, of, a, of a caricature of what we're drawing. So if we draw a cow, we focus on a few key elements, and then we're not so fussed about the others. Um, if, if we're, if we're um, focusing on, on drawing a house, then we, we kind of use these symbols for windows and chimneys and we put, we, we put fairly stereotype structures on. And if we, if we draw trees, we often develop a, well, I guess there's the lollipop tree and, and all of that sort of thing. So as, as kids, we, we, we do, because we're drawing these simplified cartoonish um, um, drawings, there is just a focus on line and on outline. And I think that's understandable as as children, but but I think as as we get older and start to to develop, I think the idea of drawing with lines really ends up being less helpful than if we're thinking more of drawing with marks, because a line a line is a mark, but a mark isn't necessarily a line. Do you get that? A line is a mark, but a mark isn't necessarily a line. And when we talk about drawing with lines, it does. It, it, look, I mean, it works well. It, it, it works well with this sort of drawing, um, and it works well with this sort of drawing, and it works well with all these architectural and streetscapes that I've spent most of my time doing because they are they are very much constructed with lines. Buildings are wonderful line line users i mean the walls are straight ceilings are straight the lines the walls come together at right angles so that gives a nice straight edge you know lines can capture the edges of buildings very effectively and very realistically um but that doesn't work so well for so many things and even if we primarily focus on on buildings there are lots of parts of buildings, lots of ornaments of buildings, lots of things around buildings that aren't served as well with a focus on lines. And I think when we're thinking line, we end up focusing on outline because that's what line does best. It outlines. And as I said, something such as, such as buildings that can be outlined very well, but other things not so well. And I think it's because lately I've been working on a whole lot of other subjects in, in the videos I've been making. And I've really enjoyed these. And that's why I've stayed in this place of kind of nature drawings for so long, because, because I had a lot of fun with them. Um, but some of them, I mean, some of them are still um, uh, drawing with line, but lots of lines. And and um, and creating effect, and I've been talking a lot lately about creating effect. And so here's a stump, but this was really about as much about the ground in front. And 
um, you know, another recent drawing of the, 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 the morning shadows and the ground where, where how do we draw things that are too detailed? And we're, when we're thinking of drawing with lines, this becomes very difficult to do because, because there are, there's too many lines. Uh, and, and which lines do we draw? It's okay if we're drawing a building that's sort of got like four walls or four lines around the walls or whatever. But but we can get overwhelmed when our thinking is, I draw this with lines and there's just too many lines. And and we have to make choices which lines we use and and um, how, how we can sort of sort this out. And then lately, of course, if you've been watching, I mean, I... I mean, again, this is this is a drawing of line, but then I've begun playing around with with tone, with with value, and now these aren't lines. And I mean, here, here's a drawing where I did very very few lines, but marks applies to everything I put on this. Marks drawing with marks rather than lines opened up a lot of possibilities with clouds that gave me much more opportunity to create effects than merely using, if you like, lines, even if there's um, perhaps more variety in the lines I've used here than normally, thinking marks and using marks freed me up for uh, a lot more opportunity. And um, and there are obviously effects that, 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 that we can create. Um, this was yesterday's video, the, the uh, rapids. Um, that I've really enjoyed, and this was the other one I've done. I've I've done lately. I'm um, I'm really enjoying using using the markers, um, and I'm finding that I'm thinking differently about the way I put marks on the paper. I find that thinking of marks rather than thinking of lines seems to open up for me more possibilities every time. Every time that I'm thinking much more of effect. Now, I guess I've made some videos recently as well. Before I did the marker ones, I, I've done quite a few that have been based on, on, on creating the effect of what we see, not the exactness of it. And that's great when we're drawing anything that has overwhelming detail, whether it's the ground, whether it's leaves on a tree, whether it's bricks in a wall, that we, we learn to create marks that that convey that effect and i and i found that thinking marks instead of lines just incredibly helpful because we can create all sorts of textures and we can do uh stippling um or we can do lots of little hatch lines we can we can use um we can use pens where we can actually sort of flex the nib and get get a wedge shape uh mark if we want there's a there's a whole lot. Um, yep, silent witness. Yep, yep, um, yep, yep. That that's that's true. That's true. But I think what I kind of see is a lot of linear texture line work, and, and where where instead of creating marks that create the effect, people default to to a pattern, a symbolic pattern in a way where they've tried to reduce the number of lines that would be needed to draw whatever it is in detail in, into a kind of a, um, yeah, a sort of simplified stylized pattern. And it, and instead we need to disconnect from, from thinking of outlining all of the little individual objects that are in this and to, and to, to find the, the visual effect that we're seeing and how can I represent, what marks can I use to represent that? But even, even with enclosed shapes, um, yeah, I mean, like, we can think of shape and we can think of form. And so when we think of shape, it's it's very two-dimensional. It's, it's um, I, can, I, can look at, I can look at a wheel at, a, at an oblique angle and it can look like an ellipse. So the shape is an ellipse, and the shape that I draw is an ellipse. But because people often focus on shape, not form, and because they're often not observing carefully enough and thinking hard enough about what they're seeing, 
the ellipse that they draw often ends up looking more like a circle than it should, which, of course, throws the whole perspective out for that tyre if the rest of the car is more correctly drawn for the angle we're looking at it from. Whereas if I'm thinking form, then I'm not seeing the shape. I'm visualising what it is first. And then instead of drawing lines simply to circumscribe, to go around the shape, I think of what marks can I make to convey the sense of form, then I might well make marks where on one side of the wheel I do a heavy line because I'm, I'm looking at that kind of perhaps I can see where two planes meet. But on the far side where I've got, got a plane that curves away from me, and so in a sense I see less of it as it curves away. It almost It's disappearing from view rather than kind of ending in a straight line. Maybe I draw, I make that mark a very light one. Maybe even I let it actually fragment at, at its point of um, greatest uh, thinness, if, if you like. I don't, I don't know if this, if this makes sense to you. But, but by thinking form ahead of shape, I mean, in, in a way I can, I can translate it back to shape when I actually draw it because I do need to draw the shape that I see. But if I imagine the form, the underlying form first, then, then I can actually, and I'm not thinking of drawing lines to describe it, but I'm thinking of making marks that represent the effect of what I'm seeing. Then the form is very important for the effect of what I see, whether it's coming towards me, going away from me. I mean, if I'm if I'm doing hatching lines, then there's there's an obvious, there's fairly immediate um, um, uh, application of that. If, if in fact, as, as I do, and many people do, we like to do our hatch lines that reflect the curvature or the, the otherwise shape of the underlying form. Um, thanks, Amy. Glad it made sense. Curved corners, curved corners are hard to draw with lines. Yeah, they're hard to convey that the corner is curving away rather than being in a in a sort of right angle. Um, and yet, and yet with our marks. If we're thinking marks rather than lines, it can help us even draw a line with a lighter touch or with an inconsistent touch because the form is, is changing even though it appears to be in a straight line. Um, and I've, I've found thinking marks has, has really helped me um, like doing these water reflections. And, and I'm not looking at the reference thinking, thinking, now, what lines do I need to draw? I'm looking at the reference thinking, what can I see there? Now, what marks can I make with my materials? And, of course, for this drawing, my materials included markers. Uh, with my materials, um, what, what marks can I make on the paper that, that's going to bring this, bring this to life in, in some way that captures the things that I enjoy in the reference? So... You know, I, I, I think it's, um, um, it's a really important distinction. And now I think that all those people in the 70s who I heard talking about marks instead of lines who I thought just were pompous kind of people, <laughs> I actually think, well, no, I, I, think, I think they're onto a very helpful thing. Because, again, when I'm thinking marks, it's not so obvious as a line. Because when I think of line, if, if my mind is working lines and I'm rushing to draw lines to capture something, invariably I'll end up with a, with a well, not invariably, but a good chance I'll end up with a fairly heavy-handed outline. Um, the word is, is shadow is using, using marks instead of using lines and, and, and to be thinking marks not to be thinking lines because not every line, um, every, every, every line is a mark, but not every mark is a line. And if we're thinking, if we're thinking making marks when we draw, if we look at our reference and we think, what marks can I use to translate this into a drawing? Then we have a lot more resources available because marks is such a wider, a wider, um, uh, catch. 
But if I'm thinking lines, what lines can I do I need to draw? Then invariably we end up focusing on outlines. Um, and that depending, you know, that's fine if we're drawing, perhaps it's fine for most of a drawing if we're drawing buildings. But if we're drawing a tree, then we end up with very unnatural, heavy edges often and very, very heavy branches where where the edges don't have the subtlety and the movement and the, the irregularities that bark often produces. It's almost as if they're just two heavy, straight black lines. And we don't get a sense that the branch is a curving shape, it's a tubular shape, because the marks have almost defined it as, as a flat roadway or pathway branching out on our paper. Because in focusing for where do I need to draw my lines, it stops me or inhibits me from, from looking for the underlying form. Uh, ever play video games? Not a huge amount, Shadow. Um, yeah, Age of Empires, about 15 years ago, um, a little bit. That's the one if I had time I would play. But I'm so much worse than everybody else um, in my family I could play with that they wouldn't want to play with me anymore. So, so that's the problem. Lines do not capture gestures. Marks do. Marks play. Yeah, I think that's a that's that's a good a good point. Skill, yep, yep, silent witness. I think that's that's very true. And in fact, reluctantly putting every line on the paper is probably a good thing, a, a good thing to be able to do. Um, to not rush to 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 that end, to not rush to um, um, uh, put lots of lines down. And look, I think I think impatience is part of it. It's like I don't know. I I just look at some drawings often, and I think you know if they just slow down, um, that and and thought more about what was happening. I mean, the the desire is there, and that's good, and and the commitment is there. Um, how can you think about form before you've drawn it, so you can indicate it without drawing the entire thing? It's it's so we can control our. It's so we can decide how we're going to put our marks on the paper in the best possible way to capture the full sense of, of what we're looking at. And so particularly if an object, if the surfaces, the edges that we see are sloping away from us in different directions, how can we do that? I mean, if, if probably the best... Um, the best example I can think of of this, of this is when you see really masterful life figure drawings, and and I, I don't. I, I mean, I, I have done some life drawing, but I'm I'm uh, not not that great at all at it. But I, I really enjoy seeing really masterfully drawn figure studies drawings, and and what you see is that when you look at them, the lines are not all the same. In fact. Often no two lines are, uh, are, are the same, not even the one line. And where muscles come in and out, you'll have to imagine muscles here, where muscles come in and out, the, 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 the pressure on the line has been adjusted as it's been drawn. So the line becomes thick and thin. And where there's a concave uh, curve, the line may thin. And where there's a convex curve and it sort of catches the shadow a bit more, the line may thicken. Where, where we've got the light source, um, that can make a line almost disappear. Or there could actually be a gap in the line where the light reflection on this surface curving away from us was, was so um, created such an effect that that is better just to leave the line. Or maybe we don't draw the line at all, but we come in with negative space from shadow behind. And you see, that's another use of marks where I'm not actually drawing the form at all. I'm drawing the darkness behind the form and I'm just stopping it at the place where the form curves around out of view, but but in strong bright light so i'm i'm looking at my reference or i'm looking at the the figure in front of me that i'm drawing and i'm thinking what marks can i use that capture most fully most effectively 
what I'm seeing, and, and as I said, uh, uh, Google Google figure figure art and um, life drawing, and and look to see the way that uh, really really top artists draw draw the fa faces and draw bodies and the variety of lines that are used, and then try and imagine that same drawing with you know just someone getting their 0.3 millimeter pen or a 0.5 or a, you know one millimeter pen and just drawing a, a steady continuous outline around every arm down one side of the leg up the other side of the leg and so forth and just imagine how dead and wooden it would look if it were done that way in relation to to not just drawing lines but to be thinking marks of various width uh, various widths and 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 various lightness and Lines that have breaks in them, possibly lines that um, that that don't. No, I don't do any digital art. I I couldn't. I cou couldn't. Uh, I, some of it looks amazing. I mean, I think it can look really great, but I'm happy to enjoy it at this stage. Um, I, I have enough things that I still want to do um, with a pen. Um, Draw like a painter, paint like a sculptor. <laughs> I like that. I like that, Benji. Um, and look, I've I've said quite a few times um, in in different contexts how how I, I I painted for ten years before I started to draw, and I was surprised when I did start to draw how much things I learned in my painting, my oil painting, not even watercolor that you know can be more perhaps connected with drawing, that in my oil painting, how many things I learned. I found that I was consciously applying and and using in my drawing. It just I could suddenly see, oh, I, I yeah, this what I learned or through experience with the paint actually actually is working here now in my drawing. And I think the whole learning to draw the effect because when when you do paint a tree, you are painting the effect of the leaves. I mean, you don't have a fine. 0 0.05 millimeter pen where even if you tried to draw every leaf you could you you have to you have to go for the effect and I found that that helped me just start to think in this sense of well I can't capture all the detail I need to work out what lines I can draw that make the detail look as though it's there but in fact it um uh, if I'd been thinking marks, I think it might have opened me up sooner to a greater variety of of um, of well of marks in my drawings. Um, an invitation to contemplate, uh, contemplation recipe. <laughs> Look, when a drawing's going well, it certainly can be a contemplative experience. Um, uh, Becca, I I agree. Uh, I've got a few that feel like trying to pull my own teeth out. As I, as I do them, but um, you know, um, yeah. In in fact, what what I find though is that as I do a drawing, um, the the tempo picks up, the pace picks up of the drawing, and I find that every drawing does develop its own rhythm if 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 it's left to us, if I'm not interrupted, and if you know if things work reasonably well, and I I really enjoy that, and sometimes. A drawing can become very quick towards the end, and I can do I can do the last half in a fraction of the time of the first half. Um, um, uh, Benji, um, a Discord. Uh, look, um, Araset actually mentioned a Discord to me. That was you, wasn't it, Araset? And I did I did um, have a quick Google to see what it was. I'm just I'm just not sure how it would work, um, how it works, um, or what what needs to be given or used. I'll, I'll, I'll look at it again and, and see if I can find someone I know who, who knows about it, who can uh, maybe just step me through what's, what's required and what possibilities that it opens up. Um, but thanks for the idea again, uh, to, uh, Benji, appreciate that. Uh, is the idea that basically joined the impression of the subject and its relations uh, much more closely than we perceive when we run it rather than being held? Uh, is the idea that basically drawing the impressions of the subject and its relations are much more closer to how we perceive objects in reality 
rather than being held back by simple contours. Um, yes, I mean, I think it should be. But the trouble is when we have a focus on, on lines, we tend to focus on simple contours or, or outlines. And, 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 we, and we overly simplify things. Our line work becomes overly consistent in how we how we draw it and therefore how it looks um and it 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 just it lacks that sense of reality it, it has this artificial look to it and now that's fine if that's what we want and there's a lot of very effective artistic styles um <laughs> yeah i thought so um um yeah yeah and no, I, I do realize that it's like that it's like that, uh, Benji. I just don't have my head around how exactly it it would work. Um, when I started painting the what would be in the background layer, um, when I did all these big trees, what I first did was um, basically a silhouette of the tree and the branches, and I would I would mix two what I would call my neutral purples, um, a cool one and a warm one, and I would look at my reference and I would literally divide it into like a map into two different um, countries, the warm ones and the cool ones, and and I would paint those on, and they would remind me as I develop the painting and and put more um, put more color on the top where I wanted the the warmer undertones in the greens and the grays to be, and where I wanted the cooler ones, and I would consciously use. I used to use thalo blue in the cool one and I used to use ultramarine blue in the warm ones. And I'd particularly try and use even the tiniest bit of those blues in the greens then that I would develop. Australian trees are, are not very bright green at all. So they're, it, they're really more grey greens uh, in most cases. But I would use those to provide a sort of a continuity with the under with the, the, the darker kind of warm and cool neutrals that I'd use. And, and basically, I'd, I'd do that. I'd be working hard at edges as I brought the painting forward so that the, the furthest edges, the, 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 the top ones, were soft and the closest edges, the branches of canopy that were coming out at us, at us were... Um, um, and I'm pointing to the painting behind me. If if it's not obvious, I'm pointing to one of the canopies of flower of um, leaves that come out to us. That has harder edges than up here. So yeah, yeah, and and also brighter colours as well. So but but certainly, um, um, shadow. That's that's how I start. Um, thanks, uh, Raymond. Um, yeah. Um, Yeah, but I think so. I think I think. Uh, yeah, it's just that I haven't really, I haven't really put color in my drawings. Um, it's one of my things just to look at for fun. Quite frankly, is to play with watercolor and and have some fun with it, and then you know presumably make some videos about it. But um, uh, I'd, I'd like to do it before I make videos about it. I mean, I, I really have only been drawing for, what is it, five years. And and I spent most, I, you know, uh, it's been a, and, and not all of that time has been entirely um, drawing. I, I did have some painting commitments that I had to finish and some exhibitions and things to, to do. Um, my usual painting snack, I don't snack when I paint because it's, it's oil paint and it's toxic and it's, all over you, so I, I, um, I don't paint. I don't eat when I paint, um, and I'm a long way from the kitchen where I actually do the painting as well, which is probably a helpful thing. Um, yes, but I, but I do hope to. Um, what I would like to do, because I've done, I've actually done no oil painting since I've done the drawing, really, and and I've never, except for one, two paintings. I've not done any architectural paintings. I would I would like to play around with a more gestural painting style, a, a, a sort of almost a drawing with oil paint sort of style. That's that's one of the things I'd I'd like to do. Um, oh, thanks, Raymond. That's 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 great to hear. Hi, Lena. Glad you <laughs> glad you found us. I, I'm not normally doing this on a well. It's Friday night for me, so it's Friday morning, I suppose, for for, for many of you. Um, unless you're on my side of the, the world. Um, but either way, 
Um, acrylic paint shadow is is um, is well, it used to be like the water based paint, and then oil paint is needs a spirit a turpentine or something to clean it. Um, yeah, I mean there are some water based oil paints, um, but uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's the difference, and um, and they they handle differently that, um, because acrylic paints dry very quickly. In comparison to oil paints, there are, there are some colours that can be wet weeks after I've put them on the the painting. Other colours dry overnight, so that's all part of the fun of oil painting. Whereas the problem with acrylic paints is sometimes the colours dry too quickly, and, and the artist hasn't quite finished doing things um, with it. So, yeah. Um, so tell me. Um, let me, there's there's 42 people listening. Please give me some comments. Do you think in terms of line when you draw, or do you think in terms of marks? Now, in your mind, when when you think, what's your focus? I'd, I'd love to have some people. I've you know I've I've just shared. I've totally shifted, and I almost always think in terms of marks now. Um, Shadow, that's because before they could restore paintings properly, they would often just put varnish on them to make the colours look a bit brighter. But the varnish would trap all the dirt and the dust that was on them and that would build up and that would make them more yellow over over the centuries. Line, Benji? Yeah, oh, look, I, I think it's worth Okay, lines first. Does anyone disagree with, with what I'm saying? Uh, yep, yeah, shadow, <laughs> line, line, lines. Uh, Okay, Becca, well, well done. Mark, sensations and space. You probably have amazing three-dimensional realistic looking drawings. Um, value and it's all marks. That's great, uh, Ariset. Um, probably values and shapes. That's that's a good um, a good emphasis. Uh, yeah, and look, Shadow, we certainly can paint without without lines and just paint in form and 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 value. Um, do I think getting used to painting without a line sketch would help? Um, when when I painted, I would still kind of I would I would have a very watered down one of my neutral sort of purpley colours. I would I would use to to sort of do a rough outline, um, but because I was doing giant tree canopies at first. Um, it was it was mostly just blocking out form that I would have to kind of bring out through through brushwork with 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 various tonal and color variations. So yeah, it, it, it line work wasn't so important for me when when I was painting. Um, seeing form takes more practice. Absolutely, there's more work involved. And and then there's trying to work out what marks would create the form would create the the form on our two dimensional paper because when I'm thinking line it's two dimensions it's a, it's a two dimensional sort of thing on the paper when I'm thinking form I'm focusing on the fact that it's a three dimensional object that I'm trying to translate onto two dimensional paper and and therefore marks. I think gives me a fuller way of doing that. What are people saying? Um, seeing for yep, uh, enjoying your own stage or destroying camera. When I start to draw, I'm destroying can bars with sketch lines. Oh, Alahan, I don't know enough about digital drawing to know what canvas are, but I, I trust it means something to others. Uh, I used to think in terms of line. Mm -hmm. Uh, hey, that's good, Amy. Uh, see, paint is by Giovanni Baldini. They are like drawings with paint. Is he that? Is he that that socialite painter of kind of like the eighteen hundreds or late eighteen hundreds who did those amazing portraits of society women? That that because if he if if that's him, I love I love those that and they really do they really do sound like. That's that's that values and shapes perspective and and yep uh, for, oh gosh uh, so when you paint you do no I don't do I don't use pencil at all with oil paint because when the oil hits it it goes all greasy light form and expression are uh, canvas right 
Ah, uh, and lines, art shapes to choose by making it. The difference between having good shapes and drawing in lines. Uh, de depending, depending on the form, uh, lines may be uh, helpful. But um, uh, turtles, uh, yeah, or may I don't know whether you, uh, turtles, whether you heard this from the start. Maybe you've come in midway through, through, and that's why you you haven't. I mean, I was I was going to make a video on this, so I might still on the difference between marks and used using the term marks and um, and lines. Um, yes, we do draw shapes. With lines, I think of shapes as a two-dimensional outline, really. Whereas form, I think of as 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 a three-dimensional um, appreciation of what's a two-dimensional form on the paper. So, so when I see something in a photo that's that's two dimensions, um, it is it is outlined in in a shape. But before I decide what marks I'll use to put it on my paper. I want to really reimagine the three dimensionality of it, so I can choose the the marks that are best. And it may be an unbroken line that I use, but I may make the line thicker in some parts and thinner in other parts to better reflect that form in that particular location with that particular lighting, because the lighting also affects the way we perceive edges of form. Uh, uh, Kimberly, uh, yep, 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 mark, form, light, yeah, that's, it's great, that's great, it's drawing an architectural subject in ink, uh, thank you, Erica, I finished the end of outline, yeah, and so, Erica, did you think the outline in some of the closer elements in a thicker line helped? I'm not a big fan of outlining, I do use a thicker line for the closer objects, Often, but I would use that. I would use that thicker line for all of the lines or all of the marks of that closer object. Um, yeah, uh, graphite can shine through paint, charcoal not so much. Yeah, um, graphite's not so good for oil paint because it it kind of mixes and muds it and. And um, uh, pencil's great with acrylic because it just goes over the top. But but the, the graphite actually almost becomes like a pigment in the oil paint. And then it, so it affects your color uh, and sometimes can, can come through. Um, yeah. Oh, well, that's great. I'm glad, Erica, that that, that works for you. Um, and uh, you and I, I'm glad you've, yep, I'm glad you feel like you've, You've got an answer. Uh, good morning, Ian, or evening as it now is. It's clearly morning in Canada as it's evening in Australia. We seem to be like ships in the night, the uh, Canadians and Australians. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I really do find if, if, you've, if you've come in late and wondering what is it that's going to revolutionise our, our drawing, it's switching from thinking of lines to thinking of marks. Um, that, that every line is a mark, but not every mark is a line. And when we think marks, we have a greater range of, of, of um, resources to to use in our thinking and our observation to to create the most accurate effect to represent what we're looking at that we want to um, master colorist with editing content focal right yeah content focal point yeah well they're all they're all important things um, okay yeah. Um, archival paints are light fast and don't fade. Yeah, that's right. Uh, thanks for joining us, Joe. If you liked it, please hit like before you go. That that helps the uh, algorithm. If 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 you are finding this helpful or have found it helpful, then please uh, don't forget to hit the like. It does does help um, help me a bit. I intend to use watercolor pencils to sketch and then let the same watercolor washes the pencil away. I just can't. Look, I, I wouldn't want to comment on a, on a helpful or unhelpful um, 
watercolor technique. I, I, I've got watercolor brushes that I bought that I've uh, pencils that I've bought and never used. Um, they're with the watercolors that I've hardly used. Um, and that may be a really great way, a sort of a mixed media approach almost to your watercolor. Um, so, I mean, look, in the end, I mean, in the end, it's not what I tell you to do. I mean, I, I hope what I do is give more possibilities for you to consider so that in your art practice, you can develop it the way you would like to develop it, using the things you would like to develop. But I think often we get into very blinkered thinking that isn't always as helpful for what we'd really like to do. And sometimes we we get blocks with improving and we just don't know what to change. It's just not so obvious why I'm not getting, because I'm already doing what I think is the best thing to do. And so it's not clear what it is I need to change. Um, by marks, I mean anything at all. So, you know, marks can be can be ink using using sketch markers, or it can be ink and line work, or it could be just line work. And you know, there, there can be there can be lots of them. You know, um, there can be more of one than the other. Um, but then some subjects lines work quite well, um, especially for architectural subjects. And it was really only when I began to draw fairly recently these these other subjects, as I was, you know, trying to think of things to make videos about, and I began to realise how limiting thinking in terms of lines has been for me, and, and how much thinking in terms of making marks has helped me to to have greater variety in what I put on the paper. Um, yeah, so so lines could could include contours, uh, certainly, but it's it's more than that, and and we could draw our contours differently every every one of them. Um, coral painters, you know, just want to come. Oh, look, I think I think I'd like to just try some get around to trying some real watercolour first um, <laughs> before I worry about digital watercolour. But thanks, Benji. Um, thinking of Mark strengthens the sense of permanence that something like a pen creates. So it's a good strategy regardless whether you use pen, pencil or digital pen. Yep, yep. Cheaper student paints, uh, thanks, Televise. Uh, cheaper student paints fade over time. Artists and professional grades won't fade. Yep, yep. Um, I mean, they still do fade, but but they don't fade as... You know, some 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 pigments fade even in the artist brands more quickly than others. Um, it's it's good to be aware of that. Um, and some yeah, golden rectangle lines. And sometimes we can we can use the the golden rectangle fairly intuitively. And sometimes it's a helpful um, helpful framework of 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 proportion to have. So it's certainly worth, uh, Kay, if you're not um, overly familiar with that, just to, to look at that. Um, my finish paintings, I just buy a, a sealant from the art shop just to spray on, um, I, I think, uh, and I've never quite decided whether I want to use a gloss or a semi-gloss. Um, I think I, I had both and then I was never sure which one to use and, um, I'm not sure that I still, my paintings don't look very shiny. I'm just looking at an oil painting over there out of camera. And I, I, I think it's a, yeah, it's, it's certainly not a gloss finish. So I, I'd say I use a, a satin finish. Um, yeah, yeah. Which is good to do because it does protect, protect the paintings. Um, can I show you? Oh, if you want. <laughs> it's um, it's a Australian flower. Um, yeah, I really like the way the flowers work. They're, they're like they're, they can be ten foot tall. Um, I would have liked to. Have, well, from now, I looking back, I wish I put a little bit more green in these palms, um, but I didn't. So. Yep, when you're an artist, 
<laughs> we're never short of things to put on the walls, are we? All the things that never sold at the exhibitions. Um, yeah, I mean, like I, I um, um, thanks. Uh, I, yeah, I use photo references and I don't consciously kind of think about a golden rectangle, but I, I've noticed that, you know, more intuitively I often find the balance works out that way of how I, um, uh, yeah, no, we call them Gaimea lilies um, and I don't know the fancy name, but they are native to Australia. So, and I don't think that's, that's their non um, common name. They only grow in a, originally they only grew in a part, part south of Sydney, a fairly small area, but they've been propagated everywhere. They're very popular in landscaping because they're such dramatic flowers. Um, the canvas size, uh, I think that one's 20 inches square. Uh, yep, yep, certainly these ones do too. So, um, yeah, yeah. But that, the photo reference actually was in front of the Art Gallery of New South Wales, so there was a big sandstone wall behind it, but I took a bit of artistic licence and replaced it with blue sky because um, because I'm the artist and I can. We're not, we're not bound by our reference. Is there a philosophy behind my painting? Um Thanks, Ian. Is, is, that the, is that the name for the Gaumea lily? Um, it's just the, the 20 inches. It was just I, I had six, 20 inches, 16 inches, 14 inches, 18 inches. It's just the brand, the way they, um, they, the way they made them. Um, uh, no, there's not really a philosophy. I'm, I'm a self-taught painter too, so I, I just kind of like, had the sense in my head of what I was trying to create and just kept changing what I did um, until it until it was looking more the way I was wanting it to look. Um, and I know that if I was to go to painting in oils again now, I would do a much looser, more gestural style because just as in my drawing, I have um, developed things that way. Um, um, well, Jessica, all my best paintings have been sold, of course. <laughs> so I mean, what do you? Um, but I have one. I have one here. This is one that um, my wife liked, so she got to keep that. It's some eucalypt blossom. So yeah. So some of them have kind of survived from um, for, for different reasons. And I've I've got two daughters who've done fine arts degrees, so some of their paintings are around the house too. Um, my worst painting, oh gosh, I'd have to really hunt around for it because it's nowhere, it's nowhere really accessible. Um, um, look, if you if you go to my um my website, Stephen Travers Art, it's it's not terribly current, um, but it does have have paintings there that you can see. Um, but again, it's got the ones that sort of haven't sold after a few years, so um, it's sort of not the best ones. Uh, you wouldn't prefer painting to drawing? <laughs> really small brush, yeah. Yeah, look, it is. Um, there is a lot of overlap. Um, a lot of, yeah, yeah, I, I get that. Uh, now, what was the mirror? Yeah, 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 I, I think so too. It's funny um, seeing this one flipped, um, looking in the in the computer in the computer screen. It's, uh, yeah, just not the same way it normally looks. I guess I'm flipped too, but I don't know what I normally look like. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, look, thanks. It sounds like if people aren't thinking of marks, then they're trying to. Um, uh, yes, look, I have, but I don't know. It just seems like so much work. Um, um in, in terms of a, a book based on my sketchbook, I mean, I, I could do I could do a a book of all my big Instagram drawings. Um, that 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 might be fun, um, and and maybe less work. Um, a book based on um, my see, I, do, I don't actually have sketchbooks. I draw on paper. I I tear the sheets out and um, draw on them one by one. I've never liked using a sketchbook. I found it a terribly um, inhibiting um, thing to do because I find that 
I don't know. I'm always thinking I'm just going to do a drawing. If I if I have a couple of really nice drawings, then I'm going to do one and wreck it. And then the book's wrecked. And like, what do you do? Tear it out? Or and then it's obvious there's one torn out. Or I don't know. It just makes me feel more hesitant. And so I find that if I'm just using a sheet of paper, I'm perfectly free to be adventurous. Um, and and it just doesn't matter whether it turns out or not in terms of what's come before. I don't think Picasso did did draw like a child. Um, I, I, th I think he actually thought hard to simplify things in the way he did, and he was trying to draw a lot of the underlying form and exaggerating it in, in what he did. Um, uh, they could still, well, yes, they could be. <laughs> uh, seems so really by how small. Uh, yeah, seems so. That's so. Felt really constrained by how small pen tips. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it is it is difficult with value with with pens, um, uh, and I think that's why having done things with a lot of a lot of little hatching, um, I suddenly thought, oh, why not just use marker and and get tone in onto it and develop um, value that way? And I've I've loved how I've loved how quickly you could. Um, you could do that. The video I was going to do today that I didn't manage to do, some, a number of things came up that sort of took the time. Um, um, I think actually was going to be entirely from marker. I wasn't going to use any line. Um, a few people have made comments about why not just do something totally with marker and no line and see how it turns out. And um, I might yet do it in the morning. Um, I'll see how I see how I feel when I wake up, <laughs> or if something inspires me, inspires me more. Um, yeah, real paint markers. Um, I I don't know. Um, yes, look, I think I think I yep yep I think I did use some. I was sent some um, watercolor markers to trial uh, a couple of years ago. So. Yeah, and I I found them difficult to use. Maybe it's because I wasn't particularly skilled in using them, and I found that I you couldn't really blend them, and and I found that I didn't didn't like the colours. They were too bright for my taste. Um, I think life generally is not quite as bright in colour as sometimes we think. So, yeah, watercolour pencils are fine. There's certainly there's as much variety in watercolour pencils as you get in watercolours. Um, but I find with the markers, there's, there's certainly the ones that I was sent, and, and it was quite a lot. Um, but there still was never the – there were too many colours. I'd, I'd have rather half the colours but twice the – twice the – <laughs> Mortal Stream 62. Yeah, look, I'll um I'll I'll tell you so you don't feel left out. Um the word um uh, the, the word that revolutionized my drawing was to stop thinking and speaking in terms of lines and to think and to speak in terms of um marks. And that in doing that it just opened up a lot more a lot more um, possibility possibility in in the way I connected my pen on the paper, both in the shape of what I was drawing, but um, but also in the pressure and 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 the use of negative space too. Um, I'm far more conscious, I think, of negative space at the moment than I was. Um, yeah. Marks and lines, yeah, <laughs> and uh, and certainly um, uh, mortal from the from the the comments that other people made. It's it's a transition that lots of us are making to to thinking in terms of marks rather than in terms of line. And when we think in terms of line, we tend to end up with shape rather than form. And you know, shape being the outline versus form being the three-dimensional reality of something. And even if we're looking at a two-dimensional shape on a sheet of paper in a photo, we can still imagine and put back into it the three-dimensional form before we then 
try and create that on our drawing. And I think you can always tell, um, not always, but you can, I find I look at many portraits and it's so clear that they've been drawn from photos because they're so flat. They're, they're, they're so flat in terms of their, their lines and, and the effect. And, and in a sense, they've captured the worst of a photo when as artists we, we have the potential to put into a photo more than the photo can provide in itself. Um, <laughs> well, I hope it is useful for you, uh, mortal. Alice in Wonderland. So I, I actually, I mean, I really don't draw from my imagination. I, I never really have. I mean, I used to doodle a little bit in school in boring lessons. I'd, I'd do these little Greek and Roman temples that that kind of grew and grew and got taller and what what not during a boring English lesson or something and hope no one noticed. Um, um but but you know, there's a there's a guy. There's a guy on Instagram I follow who does the most phenomenal imaginative architecture, like historical architecture that that's in the in the in the vibe of different uh, in the style of different civilizations. Um, I, oh, they, they really if 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 you go to my um, Instagram page and scroll down, I don't know, it's probably six months now. You'll find some battleships that I drew when I was 15, and I gave them to the girl who is now my wife and she kept them and we came across them not long ago. And so it was kind of funny to see these battleships that I drew so long ago. Um, and so they are on my, on my Instagram page. If you scroll back. Um, okay. Look, we're, we're kind of, we've been going for an hour over an hour now. I, I thought this might be a bit shorter, but look, I seem to be able to talk underwater. Um, I do them on an easel, my oil paintings. I do my drawings flat on the desk. Um, I mean, I'm filming them, so I, I guess with the video and the camera and everything, it really needs to be flat. But my but my um, my paintings are on an easel. Even, even the very small ones are on an easel. And I either stand or I perch on a stool, um, just barely touching it, yeah, perching so precariously that if I move the wrong way I can fall over um, um, thanks Erica um, yeah yeah I mean I do I do put the chat on so people can um, but I guess yes if you're listening to it you're not you're not reading the the chat um, check out the ICAA if that highlights you I, I don't know what the ICAA is at Raymond um, I have no idea. International Committee of Australian Automobiles, that's probably not it. Um, so if you want to tell me what that is, that would be good. Um, any any last-minute questions about um, institutions? Ah, right. Okay. Oh, there you go. Everyone knows about it but me. <laughs> um it's hard to find. Uh, fine. No, but I, Amy, I, I do like when you set it up, you get to say whether you want the chat to be available to replay, and I always, I always check that box. So, um, I mean, I don't watch them myself, so I guess I haven't checked. But, but um, okay. All right, well, then I do need to, if that's the case, I don't know why it's not happening, but if that's the case, then I do need to repeat the question. So I'm sorry that I haven't because I thought that people could could see them if they wanted to. My apologies. Um, great. Well, what are you all going to draw um, next? Good subject for a read. Yeah, someone else, um, name like nobody else, um, suggested that. I I did have it earmarked as a as a potential future video. Um, yeah, yeah. Have an orchid that you need to paint. Yeah, orchids, orchids are beautiful flowers. We we have some um, 
I don't have any in my garden, but we certainly have Australian orchids, but they, they tend to grow further north um, than where I am. Um, I'm, a, I'm a temperate climate. Um, Alaska, well, there'd be much. There'd be, be much there to enjoy and to paint, I'm sure. So, well, look, thanks, everyone. Um, it's um, uh, a Mac. Streetscape. Oh, very nice. That sounds great, Ian. So I, now I know St. John is somewhere in Canada. I know that much. <laughs> Every time I think of Canada, I think of all of the all of the Anne of Green Gables series that, um, as as a, as a husband with with three daughters, I, I I've watched it over my time, um, seen some of the series <laughs> numerous times, but it certainly is a land of a lot of beautiful nature all around. People, ah, yes, yes. Look, uh, for me, Amy, people are still support acts. Uh, if possible, they're walking away from me, so I don't need to draw their face. Um, and if I do, if I do do a drawing and there are people, I often draw the people first so that if they don't turn out, I feel like I haven't spoiled the rest of the drawing. Um, um, yeah, well, I don't have to manage three daughters anymore. They're all lovely ladies and they've all left home. Um, and uh, I had, a, I have a son as well. Um, but uh, yeah, no, it's, um, uh, my children are all grown up and uh, very much so. Uh, draw a castle. Ah, oh, look, Janine, honestly, if there was a castle in Australia, I wouldn't be shy to go. I'd go outside and risk someone looking at my castle drawing to have the opportunity. Don't, 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 don't be kind of, don't be bound by the opinion of people where really, I mean, you wouldn't care about their opinion with anything else. And so why care about their opinion of your drawing and, you know, the truth is, in practice, I mean, we all get so afraid of what people might come up behind us and say. The truth is most people don't come up behind us. And then the truth is that if they do, they either just make no comment and walk on or they say something nice. I mean, you know, people generally are nicer than we're often afraid to think that they might be. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, beautiful looking place, uh, Ian. Um, Eisner joins from the, I don't, I'm not, they're not jumping to mind uh, at the moment. Uh, the two pen side, if we can only bring two, um, it would be, um, it would be a, a 0 0.3 and a 0 0.1 millimeter pens because I feel like for the sorts of, Subjects I draw, on the scale I draw them, that's the combination that works. Because really the materials we use does depend what size. I mean, if I'm drawing this this size and if I was drawing this so it went over the whole size, if I was using the same pen, I'd be having to draw a lot more lines to create the same effect. So I'd probably want to have a heavier pen, a thicker line, so that I get that um, without too many more. Um... <laughs> There's a few. Ian, I, I grew up in Chatswood. Uh, I was born in Chatswood um, and, and spent the first 23 years of my life there. And I know Castle Craig. And there's quite a few houses there that, that have castly, turrety uh, things. How do you know Chatswood? <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah. Um, that's crazy. <laughs> I mean, I don't live there now, but um, yeah, yeah. It's, um, um, went to Chatswood High School. Um, when I talk about being at school, that's that's where I was. Um, yeah, yeah. So we're thinking marks this week. If 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 you if you yeah. If you're a secret line thinker, if you think of drawing lines, when you draw drawings, try thinking marks. Say, what marks are going to, um, 
I don't know if I miss my – well, like I did enjoy my school days. I think I miss being 17 more than I miss school, but um, <laughs> they were good They were good times. Um, you know, I mean, you know, yeah, I, I had a good group of friends um, and uh, I, I, I still have, I don't know, probably about a dozen, 15 of the people I went to school with, I still go out with, I still socialise with, I still see – Every few months, uh, sometimes a bit more. Uh, we just we couldn't see the point when we left school of not continuing to hang together. And then people we met after we left school just seemed to join our group. So our school core group got larger and whatever. Almost fifty years later, we're still friends. Um, you know, bit of life advice: hang on to old friends because you can't replace them. You can't replace them easily. Even with good new friends, they don't know you the way old friends do. There's a lot of water under the bridge with um, people you met. And, of course, if, if, if I met them at sc school when I first um, started high school, then it's closer to 60 years that, um, that I've known some of these people. Um, I graduated in English history teacher from 17. Um, what did I just say? Sorry, I got... <laughs> I was reading seventy. I uh, English history teacher from Macquarie Uni um, when uh, when I finished school, and I taught for three years, which is why I think um, I often talk about the learning process. Because although I'm a self-taught artist, um, I understand about learning, and I was able to put those principles to practice for myself. I I was perhaps had a head start on many people of. How to self, how to self learn? Because when I'm self taught, I'm really a self learner, and I need to find my own direction. Um, oh, I, I have lots of new friends too, um, but um, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, okay, yeah. Well, my my wife, um, she she grew up in Roseville, uh, in 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 Linfield, which is between Chatswood and. Um, and uh, Roseville. So, um, in fact, um, kids from um, from uh, Lane Cove, Chatswood, Roseville, and Linfield all went to Chatswood High back in my day. So, yep, yep, knew that knew that area very well. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I've got I've got lots of um, new good friends as well. But I'm just saying, you you can't get new old friends easily, um, and it is nice to know people. Uh, where <laughs> well, there's not as much as there used to be, and it's a little bit thinner on top. But um, yeah, I'm I'm happy. I'm not. I've got no complaints about my hair, so that's that's good. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh well, that's great. Well, I didn't think I'd be talking with a guy from the west coast of Canada about uh, about uh, the North Shore, lower North Shore of Sydney. That's great. All righty. So um, probably it's time to say goodbye. I'm just raving now. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that can happen too. That can happen. But, like, I don't know, like, yeah. Um, we're still the same personalities. Um, um, oh, you're in New Brunswick. Uh, sorry, I was thinking um, Anne, of, um, Anne of Green Gables was on the West Coast. Um, but uh, right. Um, there is lots of golf down here. I do not play golf, but there is lots of golf in Sydney. So, look, thank you, everyone. If uh, if you haven't hit like, please do. Um, if you want to leave a comment, that's helpful for me in terms of the algorithm. Um, I'm still planning to do a, a live stream on my Sunday night, probably Sunday morning or lunchtime for a lot of you. Um, and um, But have a, have a great weekend and um, see you then, Vial. And remember, think marks, not lines. See you next time.